My name is Kevin Lutchman and we are currently backstage once again at Lutchman Studios and this is Backstage with Kevin Lutchman. This is a podcast talking about lifestyle, music, photography and all things creative. Guys, welcome to Backstage with Kevin Lutchman. Hi guys, my name's Kevin Lutchman and we are backstage here at Lutchman Studios and today sitting in my chair is Mr. Charlie Boy Peters. Charlie is a professional Muay Thai fighter, he's also a group fitness instructor, he's also the co-founder of Raise London and he's here today to tell us about his story and what he's been up to during these times. Welcome Mr. Charlie Boy Peters. Thank you. I just want to actually, where did Charlie where did the boy come from with Charlie Boy Peters before we start? So the boy actually came from Thailand. I used to live in Thailand about 10, 11 years ago, as you know, because you came to visit me. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, one of the fighters from Thailand called Damien Alamos, he used to just call me Charlie Boy. You know, every morning I'd walk into the gym and he'd it, say, Charlie Boy, Charlie Boy. And it just caught on. And then, then I started putting it on my shorts when I was fighting. Then the other fighters started calling me here, the other trainers. And to be honest, it just stuck. I mean, it, it, it flows off the tongue quite well. And usually people that are called Charlie, Charlie boy. Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's so natural to me now. So it was it first started when you was in Thailand? Yeah. And then you just kind of just carried that on? Yeah, the short answer is it started in Thailand. Oh, and yeah, cool. uh, yeah, just carried it on really. Yeah. So a question that I want to ask, and especially for the people that are listening is, Obviously, you know, you're a professional Muay Thai fighter, you know, you work at um, several different top gyms in London. But before that all happened, how we first met was actually through hairdressing. Yeah. You know, we both used to work in um, Tony Guy in Blue Water. So I kind of just wanted to kind of take a little bit of a step back before the fitness and before the personal training. Because, you know, of course, as I knew when we was working in Blue Water together, um, you was training Thai boxing. So I really want to kind of first understand how did the hairdressing side come to it? And then is the fighting and the training, was that something that you've always done as a kid? I kind of fell into both, in all honesty. I had, I had got a Saturday job at Tony and Guy, mm-hmm. so when I was around 15. So I was there every Saturday. My dad got me that, that job just out of choice, just because he wanted me to have a, a part-time job, basically. I lived pretty close to Blue Water, so it worked out. At the time, I was obviously at school and I used to play rugby every weekend. Massive fan of rugby, loved watching it, loved playing it. Yeah. Then kind of what happened, when I, when I left school, I, le- I started working full-time, two weeks after the last GCSE, so I was straight in at the deep end. Was that working in? At Tony and Guy. Okay. Yeah, 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 so they kept me on. And one of the reasons they kept me on is because I was male. And at the time, the salon had no males, right. pretty much. And then obviously you joined, but before that you got Dexter joined and you know, so yeah, I was kind of like the first sort of male there really. And so I was still playing rugby Mm -hmm. at the time. And then obviously being full time, you had to work every Saturday. Rugby for me at that age, then all my matches were on a Saturday, whereas Mm -hmm. before the previously they were on a Sunday. So it worked out and I just basically couldn't do it. And so I had to stop playing the rugby. At that same sort of time, literally, I mean, it's, it's incredible how the world works. I'd say two weeks before, I went to my first Thai boxing lesson. I went to Thai boxing to just help me improve my fitness and cardio for the rugby. Mm-hmm. I had to stop playing the rugby. Thai boxing worked out, started at 7 p.m. I finished work at six o'clock. I could drive there within the hour. I was like, well, why don't I just do that a bit more? At the time as well, Without going too deep, my dad used to do a bit of white collar boxing in the city, mm-hmm. you know, for fun and fitness. So then we started talking a lot more about it. And obviously I look up to my dad so much. So I was like, yeah, let's, let's have a crack at it even more. So, so at, th- at this point, how old was you at this point? So at this 16? was probably around, yeah, 16, 17. I'd say 17, yeah. Yeah, so then the fitness journey <laughs> did actually start through the fighting, through doing Muay Thai. Yeah, I took it a lot more seriously. With the rugby, I was still just messing around. It was, it was just fun good crack with everyone, but I never took it as serious. Yeah. Then the fighting, even the fighting, I didn't take it seriously from, from the get-go. I took it seriously from probably the age of like, I don't know, 20 years old maybe. Yeah. So yeah, 
I mean, when I first started, obviously I was going out, I was drinking still, I was eating whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was 18 years old, I was, I was slim, I could get away with it. Then, as the years progressed, then it happened. Then I got more serious. Yeah, and then was that because you just kind of fell in love with doing the Thai boxing and then you just enjoyed that buzz? And then what did you kind of, then you, you saw that you could do the fights and then you thought, right, okay, I want to give this a Yeah, I mean, go. I just started to enjoy it, I think. I don't actually know how or when it happened, but I always enjoyed contact sports. I mean, rugby was always more of a fight than it was a, was a game, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we loved it. And with the fighting, what I loved about it, very similar to hairdressing, is that you can continuously learn. Mm -hmm. So I'd learn how to punch and kick, but then each week it would get better. Then all of a sudden I'm getting fitter. And then I'm like, well, I actually want to eat healthier, because if I'm working out this hard, yeah. I want to get the most out of it. And it kind of snowballed from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. It's kind of like one of those ones, like you said, like with hairdressing, how you know the more and more you do it, the better you are at doing it, and then you can always learn something new and different yeah. from it. You know. So then, obviously, at that point, because I remember when we was working in Blue Water together, you know, you, there was a point, you know, where you left Tony and Guy, yeah. and then you kind of went full time doing tight boxing, right? Yeah. So. Well, was that kind of like, you had enough of hairdressing or did you kind of just think to yourself, okay, I want to try something new, completely different and focus on that? So, yeah, or? so what happened was is, I think it was around 20 years old, I was like, actually, I want to start doing this quite well. Mm -hmm. I was fighting amateur, which meant I had shin guards on, head guards sometimes, and the rounds and the times were a bit different and you wasn't getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. At 20, I started saving up a lot of money and I thought, right, after my vardering, mm -hmm. You have to do a year on a shop floor. Then after that, I was kind of like a free agent. Mm -hmm. So I was like, once I do all my training, my vardering, and my year back, I'm going to go live in Thailand. Thailand's obviously where Muay Thai originates from. So I thought, if I go over there, it's going to make me better. I can focus on it solely. Saved up, saved up. Ended up doing 18 months out there in total. Mm -hmm. And I was still cutting hair while I was out there. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I think in 12 months, I had 16 professional fights. Maybe a bit too much. I learned a lot from it afterwards, as well as so much whilst I was there. I won my first world title there and like, just absolutely loved it, absolutely loved it. When I came back afterwards, I then went and worked in the salon again for a year. And again, it's funny how the world works. My contract was running up mm -hmm. for me to then renew it a year later. At the same time, my trainer, Kieran Kettle, who had been my trainer for so long, opened up his own gym. And he asked if I would go and work there. I could PT all day. Mm -hmm. I could cut hair when I wanted to. And I, and I got to train twice a day. And it was, it, was, it was the unknown. It was like I'm leaving guaranteed money, you know, guaranteed comfort mm -hmm. to, okay, am I going to get busy? Am I going to have PTs? Is it, you know, training's great, but I need to live. One of the best decisions I made, that was in 2013. We, uh, we worked at the Double K gym. That's when, for me, it went real professional. Yeah. I mean, 18 months in Thailand is as professional as it can get. Yeah. But living in England, I got to train twice a day, I got to work and make money, let's do it. Yeah. So touching on what you just said about like when you was in Thailand, you, were short, you won your first world title. So yeah. you're actually a three-time champion. Yeah. And <laughs> you're, you know, you're very humble, you know, I, you know I, I've known you many years, and it's one of those ones like, you know, to, to get that status, and you are currently ranked at UK number one, aren't you, yeah. in Muay Thai? So, you know, tell us, you know, I wanna kind of like, was that something that you kind of wanted to work towards doing? Did you, you know, you always envision that, right, okay, I wanna be a world champion. Yeah. You know, was that something that you really just wanted to work your ass off and be the best that you can possibly be and win? So it's funny, I remember just before I was flying out to Thailand, I was out in uh, the area that I grew up, I was in Dartford. Yeah. I was in a pub for a friend's birthday or a nightclub or whatever it was. And I remember talking to this group of guys. Everyone was drinking, I wasn't. And obviously mm -hmm. that was a weird thing at the time. And I said, oh, you know, I'm going to Thailand. And everyone was like, oh, you know, you love the parties, this and that. And I said, no, I'm going over there to fight. And I said to them, I said to this group of guys, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win a world title over there. And all of them laughed as much like, you know, a bit drunk, like, yeah, 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 go, go, yeah, yeah, well done, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's this guy talking about? Yeah. And I remember one guy looking at me and he just went, I, I think you will. Like, I definitely think you will, good luck, da 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 
So going over to Thailand, I wanted to get as much experience as I wanted. And then if the time came and I got the opportunity to fight for a world title, I'd jump at it. So yeah, yeah it happened, I think, six months, seven months into it. My dad came out to watch and support, which was just incredible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I won, I think I won knockout second round or first round, I can't remember now. But it was great, it was euthoric. Mm -hmm. So I've got three different world titles in different organizations and I've defended one of them five times yeah. as well in, in different countries as well, as well as England. Yeah. So tell us kind of about that sensation of, you know, because I can imagine like, a street fight is completely different to <laughs> fighting in a ring because you know when you're fighting in a ring of course you're training for a purpose you know you're going into that ring to fight against your opponent and it's yeah. kind of you need to fight because if you don't fight you're obviously going to get the shit kicked out yeah. of you so it's kind of like tell us about you know I, I don't know if you remember like your first experiences of being in a ring you know and of course you know you've won a lot of fights but then you've also drawn and you've also lost so kind of like tell us how that sensation is being in a ring like you know what, what's going through your head is there a big build up to it and you know how do you kind of cope with you know like anything it's kind of it's always it's always difficult when you experience losses you know yeah. like whether that's to do with um work or any goals that you set yourself up to do you know like kind of like to, and how do you deal with that do you kind of you know, because of course, like with fights that you've lost, you know, it's not like you're like, oh, fuck this shit, I'm never going to do it again. Like you pick it up, yeah. you know, you're, you're like me, you know, you never let anything stop you from doing what you want to do. So kind yeah, of like yeah. tell us about that. Well, you can relate to it just as much because you've done the, was it HBA? H Hairdressers Journal, yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah that British one. Hairdressing Awards, yeah. British Hairdressing yeah, Awards, yeah. that's the one I was thinking of. Like, you know, you've done that and I've been to one of those before and it's exactly the same sort of feeling. I mean, especially when you win and you go up, you know, you have the build up, you have every day, every week, you're, you're focusing on that goal. For me with fights, I mean, I loved it. I remember my very first fight. It was outside, it was in a car park, but it was in a ring. It was quite funny, it was in the back of a pub. Okay. It was brilliant. It, it so been... That was amateur, right? Yeah, 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 that was amateur. So head guard and three rounds, two minutes each. And I remember just gassing, like yeah, third yeah. round was just very slow. Did you, do you, do you, did you have like, any tactics in mind? Was you just like, right, I'm just gonna go and try and knock him out? Yeah, I just wanted to fight. Like, a amateur, it's more, it's more just like a glorified sparring match. Yeah. Because you, know? yeah. you don't know what to expect the first couple of times. And then, as you get on, you try and expect a little bit more, and that's when you start learning everything. I mean, each fight has its own, has, it has its own build up, has its own euthoric feeling. Mm -hmm. I've had fights where I haven't necessarily felt it so much or enjoyed it. I've had fights that have been like, wow, this is unbelievable. You know, I, I remember fighting in France once against a French guy. Mm. So it's like, you know, as I walked out, everyone was booing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was brilliant. Like, I, I thrived off of it. I yeah, enjoyed yeah. it. But it was very hostile. And then I fought in the London O2 with my crowd there, and yeah. it's just been incredible. And I mean, walkouts, uh, walkouts are part of the act mm -hmm. as well, you know. I remember uh, Man's Not Hot coming out, and it was like a week old, and I, came out to it at the start of the fight. Yeah. Sorry, at the start of the warm up, faded it out, put my original track on. Yeah. But everyone went mad for it. Everyone was singing along. And that's like I'm standing there just thinking like, yeah, this is, you know, this is theatre, this is performance. Yeah. When you're in the fight, it becomes different because then you're kind of like, okay, I've got a job here. I've got work here. You can imagine what it's like being on stage. Yeah. You know how to do a haircut, but now all of a sudden you've got thousands of people watching you. Yeah. Now you've got to talk about it. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm here to do a job. I'm enjoying this. I know how to do this, but I've got to perform. I mean, do you still, do you still get nervous? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, like, do you, do you do anything to kind of like, I don't know, hype yourself up or like get you, you know, like when you're backstage, you know, you're in your change room, do you, or do you like to just zone out, talk to no one, headphones on and just focus or? Well, you've been behind backstage yeah. a few times with some of my fights. I'm probably almost too relaxed. Mm. And maybe I, maybe I regret that sometimes. I fight very relaxed because, you know, I, I, you know, I had a temper as a kid and when you lose your temper, you, you know, you're never in control. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I want to do is try and fight someone angry and lose everything. Mm -hmm. So there's no need. I enjoy this and I enjoy the sport, I enjoy the game, I enjoy to fight. So it's, I like to fight relaxed and be with it. Backstage, I like to just relax and have a laugh. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I remember once, uh, backstage, it was me, Kira, my, my good friend Shrek, and a few of us. 
And we're all sitting there, all just sitting down having a laugh. Mm. And the runner who comes in looking for the fight, he came running in and was like, who's fighting? Because I was just so relaxed. Yeah, I was sitting yeah, yeah. down and we're all having a laugh, taking the mick out of each other. I was like, all oh, right, yeah, we ready? Let's go, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, everyone is completely different though. Some fighters like being slapped, some fighters like getting in the zone. Mm. I mean, when I'm backstage, I'll put my music on because usually I'm like main event or towards the end. So I have like hours, so I'm just yeah, like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go and watch some, but then I'm just gonna sit down, I'm just gonna sit with my music and, you know, just focus on what needs to happen. Yeah, uh, um, a question I wanted to ask as well, just I guess the build up to a fight, yeah. you know, because when you're fighting, you have to cut down to a particular weight. And, you know, I've seen you, huh. you, do, you know, you show me videos of crazy stuff that you had to yeah. do. Like I remember seeing a video of you, you having to cut weight. So then you've gone into like a really hot bath and they put towels of, over you yeah. when you're out of the bath to, um, you know, lose all the water weight. And then I remember you saying that you had to like skip for 20 minutes and this and the other. So like kind yeah. of like tell us about, you know, that like how you know, hard it is because it's not just a case of like, oh yeah, I'm going to do a couple of rounds like on a bag and train three, four times a week. It's like, oh, as a man. professional fighter, like it literally, you have to live, breathe and shit it, right? Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, I imagine like the, the different commitments that you've had to, you know, stop drinking, you know, not go out on nights out or if you go out on nights out, making sure that you're at home at a suitable yeah, time yeah, in order yeah. to like go to sleep. So kind of like, tell us about, you know, some challenges that you've had, like, you know, through that because... I imagine there's been times where yeah. you haven't made weight and you're like, oh my God, like... The sacrifices you have to make, it's almost like the more and the bigger the sacrifice, the more success you can kind of get. Mm -hmm. and, and would you say that at anything in life and with what you do? Yeah, generally, I, think, yeah. I, I mean, I think anything in life is knowing what to sacrifice and what is worth it. Mm -hmm. Me not going out drinking was pretty easy just because I'm not a big drinker myself. And... Early on in my career, I w or, or something like that, I would go out, but I'd drive. Mm. So let's just say the next day would be a rest day. Okay, so I'll go out, I won't drink, I'll be with everyone. And what will happen is, is at like 11 o'clock in the evening, 12 o'clock in the evening, everyone's pretty pissed, everyone's pretty drunk. So do you know what, I'm gonna leave because whether or not I stay here to 11 o'clock or 2 a.m., mm -hmm. no one's gonna remember, no one's gonna know, Yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. Did you, did you do that whole, I'm just going to go to the toilet? Ah, oh, just tell them. <laughs> if, they, if they say otherwise. To be honest, I never actually got any grief because everyone knew. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Loved having you here. Thanks. Yeah. Next morning, what time did you leave last night? I can't remember. Yeah. You, it's like, you know, and that happened a few times and that was perfect. But then I enjoy staying in because I have Epsom salt baths to lose weight, but I also have them for recovery. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm putting all this work into training. The, the second pillar is recovery. Because if you're not training, if, sorry, if you're training really hard and you're eating really well, but you're not recovering, what's the point of doing it? Yeah. You know? It's and, and I imagine a lot of people are just like, right, okay, I need to eat healthy. I need to make sure I train really hard. But then it is that third one. Oh, man. That's it's the biggest one. missing, isn't it? Yeah. Recovery is key. And, and I've done a lot of uh, reading on it before and I've got a lot of books that I've read about it. And it's, recovery is key. They've done scientific tests on it. It's not about... Practice makes perfect. It's sleeping makes the practice perfect because mm -hmm. your body, whilst you're asleep, your mind can rest and it goes over everything that you've learned. Mm. So it's not just a case of doing it, doing it, doing it. But then so many people have different views on it. Fighting, for instance, you have to have recovery. Mm. You need your sleep, you need your rest. Sleep and rest go hand in hand with weight loss. Mm. Right, perfect, I need that because I need to lose the weight. Personally, I never blew up over fight. I was still training in my fight camp, uh, sorry, after a fight camp. So after a fight, I was always training. So you wouldn't take like nah, loads of time off never, and like never. binge on food and get really nah. fat or anything like that? I'd binge, I'd binge for a day yeah. and then I'd train again. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, well, I kind of want a pizza tonight, so I'll mm. get a pizza, but guess what? I'm running 10 miles tomorrow, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's always our after a fight. Fight camp, you can't. The sacrifices that you were saying, oh man, going out, eating salads whilst everyone's eating ribs, yeah, burgers, yeah. chips. But then in my head, I'm like, okay, well, do I not go out? Or do I just go out and sacrifice just one meal? Yeah. It is what it is. I started cooking a lot because I wanted to go out and have a burger. Mm -hmm. But if I make it myself, it's now 300 calories less yeah. than the 800 I was gonna eat or something like that. Um, birthday parties, missed out on those yeah. loads. 
Um, what about relationships? Yeah, I was like, because I know, like, like I know you've, you know, like I said, I mean, we've known each other over ten years now, and it's like, I, you know, I, I know you've been in relationships, but like, I can imagine like with doing that, the sort of pressure that you have. Fight, yeah. Fighting's a selfish sport, mm. right? As much as I'm doing it with my team and my trainer, it's a selfish sport because it, it, take, it takes a special woman. And it's not that I didn't find any, it was the fact that I just didn't want to put any in that position. Mm. I was so tunnel visioned, it didn't matter. So it takes a very special woman because I have to go to bed early. I have to eat certain foods. I don't want to go out. So it's my Monday to Friday, I'm training my nuts off. Mm. Saturday night comes and she's like, right, let's go out, let's, you know, let's go to get some cocktails or let's go to a bar, let's mm. do something. I'm like, I don't really want to, I just want to sit and watch a film. Yeah, yeah. You know, what? Oh, that's boring, you know. And if we want to go out for something to eat, I'll go, well, let's go around like four or five o'clock, be there for a couple of hours, come back, eight, nine o'clock, watch a film, go to bed. Mm. Instead of the traditional, let's go out, put tables at eight o'clock, get back at 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Yeah. So it, I was single at one point for seven years. Best time of my life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was, and you're like, and it's coming up eight years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm into full team. So yeah. It's getting a bit lonely. No, it's, I mean, it was, it was just a set. I was, again, I was just so tunnel vision. Yeah. At one point, one year in my fight career, I had fought nine times, which was the most that anyone in the UK had fought at that time, being in the UK. In a year? In a year. So wow. it was literally four weeks, fight camp, rest the week and I had to then it was like right four weeks again yeah. rest the week you know give or take something like that sacrifices dieting through Christmas day all the time I mean yeah. I run every day on Christmas day and boxing day There's, it makes no difference what mm -hmm. day it is I enjoy it I love it roads are empty people are in a happy mood it's mm -hmm. great but I remember having to fight early January so New Year's Eve stayed in yeah guess what New Year's Day was in the gym was training my trainer Kieran at the time was just as dedicated, I think like on New Year's Day, sometimes he'd come in and train me. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to take a hat off for that and Sunday sessions sometimes. So, but for me it was normal, it was what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I want to succeed, so this is what I have to do. It's like a non-negotiable. Yeah. How bad do you want it? Yeah. You know, Christmas will come How much you want to commit, year. how much you yeah. want to sacrifice. Food's food, right? It's like, a roast dinner is actually pretty healthy. It depends on the size that you have and everything mm -hmm. else around you. Yeah. Christmas, I just couldn't have any chocolate. Yeah. So, and it paid off, you know, I won the fight in January or whatever it was. Uh, I nearly fought on New Year's Eve once. And it's like, I was like, yeah, cool, I don't mind. Don't yeah. mind that at all. But you know, I don't think it happened at the time. So sacrifice is like, what's worth sacrificing? You know, n now if, I mean, my sister's getting married uh, next year. So if, for instance, a fight came up on my sister's w uh, wedding, I'd be like, no, mm. I'm not missing that. That's one thing I'm not missing, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, and, but, Going out, getting drunk with your mates, is it really worth it? You want to focus on your goal, mm. you know, let them do that. Missing bi birthdays and, and anniversaries, yeah, you can kind of get away with that. They'll have, they'll have that next year, mm. you know, you can always do that again. And it's kind of like Valentine's Day, because Valentine's Day is recently just gone. Yeah. It's just another day, you know, it doesn't matter. Mm. So, you know, for me, Valentine's, being with me is like Valentine's Day every day anyway. Yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. know, it's, it's great, it's great fun. But, but they're the sort of things where I've had to lose weight on my birthday once. Mm. Like I had to make weight. So like you said about losing the weight, I was in America, where I was I fighting? I think it was like California I was fighting. And I had to go out, lose weight, like on my birthday. And I treated myself to a Dunkin' Donut. It was the first time I had a Dunkin' Donut, but I got a couple chocolate Dunkin' Donuts and that was my birthday cake. Yeah, you know, and I fought on the 25th of September, which was the day after, and it didn't bother me because it was part of the job. Yeah, it's like I'll celebrate my birthday afterwards. Yeah. Whatever. Like you said, it's the, it's, those, um, it's committing to what you initially want to have, you know, and yeah. what you want to work towards. A question that I wanted to ask you actually, just because, you know, I know there's some people out there that kind of think fighting is just such a bad thing to do. Yeah. You know, and I'm saying this actually as as a parent, like so, like with you know, I have my boy Theo, as you know, and King Theo, King Theo, and you know, of course, when he starts getting older, I want to get him into like self defense or fighting. But then there's some people that would say, "Oh no, I'd never want to get my kids into fighting. Oh, it's such a bad thing to do because, you know, like oh, boxing is really bad because 
you know, it's going to make them really violent. Da, da, da. So what's your kind of like intake in that? Because you just said it, you know, like early on, how when you was younger, you used to have a really bad temper and yeah. then you started fighting. And now when you're, you know, like, is it because now you can defend yourself and you know how to control your anger through the fighting? I mean, like, what do you... There's so many ways I can answer this. I don't know if you've ever been asked that question before, but it's like... I mean, I, I, I've had women say it before, I'd never get my kid in it. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, it's so, such a violent game. Listen, there is, in it, there, there is a sense of violence, but you just have to watch football. People get injured in football. Mm. You know, people get injured in rugby. Um, that, they're still pretty contact sports. But in terms of like fighting, you tend to find the people that fight on the street usually have no fight experience. Mm. They might have gone to a couple of lessons or whatever, but the dedicated ones, especially the professional fighters, they won't be fighting on the street because they have their respect. I found that the more, I mean, because there was a sense of I wanted to kind of look after myself as well at a younger age, <clears throat> you know, being out in the streets as a kid or whatever, it's always good to, to know something. But I actually found that the more I learned about fighting, the less I wanted to use on people, mm. unless I was in the ring. And then it calms everything down. You see things for what it is. If someone's given me abuse on the street, I don't care. Mm. I've got nothing to prove to him. I know what I'm worth and I know what I can do. Yeah. The scariest thing is that now being like as professional as I am, what, 67 professional fights. It's actually, it scares me to know what I could do to someone on the street without a referee or a judge. Yeah, yeah. But then again, in the same breath, having a street fight and a Muay Thai fight is completely different. Mm. I could trip over. The guy could hit me from behind. Mm. The guy could, the guy's not gonna punch me as, as traditional as they would in a, in a boxing fight, right? He's gonna come in, windmills, punch, kick, everything. He might even pull a knife out. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it opens up a whole corridor. So for me, walking away is the best set. If you wanna fight me, continue. If you wanna keep fighting me, let's go into a ring and we'll do it properly, mm. professionally. Um, one of the best things that I think anyone can learn is a little bit of self-defense. I also find cocky people need to do it because they need to realize that they're not in, in, indestructible. You know, they're, they're, they are humans. Mm -hmm. Everyone has this idea of, I'm gonna punch him one time and he's gonna be knocked out. Yeah. It doesn't always happen. Yeah. Right? You know, so, so you have to, it, it, it humbles everyone. Kids, it's great to learn because it gives them self-confidence as they're growing up. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can't recommend it enough to people. Okay, so another question that I want to ask you is that um, after doing your Muay Thai, or during doing your Muay Thai, you started to get involved with personal training, like you said. And then you've now moved into London, you're doing personal training, you're doing Greek fitness classes. Mm -hmm. So kind of like tell us about your you know, kind of what made you decide to move into London? Because obviously being in Kent, the experience and the sort of um, clientele is completely yeah, different to being sure. in London, you know? So kind of like tell us what made you decide that you want to come into London and sort of like venture out to there. When I was training to be a fighter, or sorry, when I was training as a fighter, I then went and got my level three PT because I thought, Fighting's great, but not everyone wants to do the fighting. So at least if I have the level three, I can go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So didn't use much of that knowledge as a level three PT in the gym. However, moving into London was a massive game changer. And then that's when you need the qualification. So it was well worth doing. Again, it was, it's just how the world works. I got offered a job in London at the same time my trainer Kieran told me he was gonna to immigrate to Canada. Right. So with Kieran immigrating to Canada, for me, my fight career, my fight path was gonna change massively. Cause he was, yeah, he's been my coach for over 12 years or something like that, 12, 13 years. So went into the, the gym in London, took the job on a couple of days basis. So I was still living in Kent, traveling in. Then I got offered two other placements at two other top gyms. Mm -hmm which again was, was, was amazing. Traveling in and out of London, and then my friend and business partner, Waz, was like, well, why don't, we, why don't we live together? Like, you know, he was looking for a place at the time. I needed a place, obviously. So I was like, right, let's, let's do it. And again, it all worked out at that time. Kieran immigrated to Canada. It was the right time for me to then move into London. Because 
Kent is Kent, right? Mm. You lived and grew up in Kent, you know yeah. how it is, but everything's happening in London. Yeah. Doesn't take anyone to know everything happens in the capital, right? So you make it happen and, and so many doors are open when you come up in here. There's there's a hell of a lot of different people here, different crowds, different backgrounds. Mm. It's just it's just the place to be in it, really. Yeah. End of. So then with that, obviously being a personal trainer, having the experience of doing your level three and the knowledge of fighting, I want you to kind of like, you, you know, this, this whole world we're in at the moment, um, I, I always say we're in a digital era, you know, yeah. where there's so much things happening through social media and I have to be a bit careful in how I say this, but you know, there's a lot of people out there that can be personal trainers through doing a short course online for like 12 weeks for X amount of money. Yeah. And then straight away you can say that you are a personal trainer, but then you don't really have any real credibility behind it. And then you see the other side to it where you have an influencer that has thousands of followers that are personal trainers, but yet, yeah, they've got a really good physique, but they don't really have the knowledge and the background behind it. I mean, like what's your sort of like intake in that? because it's probably the same like hairdressing as well, you know, it's a very saturated industry yeah. where, you know, people can be into their fitness and be like, right, okay, I want to be a personal trainer. Like, for, for example, like myself, like I love fitness, like, and I love doing it for myself, like I enjoy learning new things about it, but I wouldn't want to call myself a personal trainer or wouldn't want to go in that field because I don't really, really have any sport or credibility behind it, you know? So yeah. what's your sort of like views and opinions on that, you know? I'm lucky I've got the credibility. But then also, the way that I trained and what I learnt as a fighter wouldn't necessarily correspond to level three PT. Mm -hmm. You get Sharon who wants to come in and just lose a little bit of weight. It's like, right, we're doing kick drills, we're going running every day, you know, we're gonna sit in a hot bath before you're weighing, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. The, the, everything's saturated nowadays and unfortunately, a lot of it is all smoke and mirrors. Mm. So if I look like the best PT on my Instagram page, but I'm not, I still look it. And nowadays people go on looks. Yeah. There are a lot of people in the PT world who, who do it just for the sake of it. There's people that give out advice that really shouldn't. You know, there's a yeah. lot of people that don't know their lanes. However, on the flip side, you have to start somewhere. You have to try it. As long as the information you're giving out is true, and the problem is, is certain information changes left and right. Mm -hmm. Let's take diets, for instance. We talk about dieting quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, because I might, well, you know, that's another thing that I was going to touch yeah. on. Like, there's so many different diets going out there that's, you know, you've got your keto diets, you've got intermittent oh, fasting, you've got this, that, and the other, like the best way how to lose weight, the, the shakes and whatever else, Slim World. And you know what it is? It's, it's <coughs> like fads. Mm. And let's just take it and look at it like haircuts. Yeah. There's always a big famous haircut. Yeah. I remember Frankie from the Saturday, she had that short over the year, yeah, yeah. long one side, everyone wanted it. Yeah. Everyone had it. Then it was like, the gents would come in, David Beckham's got this haircut, right, we want that haircut. You know, mm. so the diets are very much like that. You can't beat the principles. Calories in, calories out. Yeah. If you're but it is as simple as that, which lo loads of people are yeah. just like, oh no, there must be like some sort of real way to it. And it's like, like you say, calories in, calories out, you know? It's, it's calories in, calories out, and sacrifices. So it goes back to how bad do you want it? Again? Yeah. You know, sacrifices can be anything, and it doesn't have to be such demonized as it, as it is. But it's just, I think nowadays so many people get relaxed and just want the easy, the easy way. Mm. People go into fitness and PTM because they think it's easy. But if you want the real results, that's where it becomes different. Something that I like to look at, especially with diets as well, but also with training. If you want to lose weight in four weeks, you can do that. You stick to it, you eat really well. But is that same person going to have kept that weight off in eight weeks? Mm. And I mean, you're a perfect example yourself because you lost so much, then you put on so much because of life and whatever, yeah. and now you've done it again. And now, because I know you personally, you, you maintain it, you keep it off, you still train regularly, you have your cheat meals, but you also, 80, 90% of the time, you're on it. Mm. And that's what people don't realize. The secret to losing weight is calories in, calories out. A bit of training always helps. Yeah, It's not the only way to lose weight, but also it's that sacrifice. It's, it's how bad do you want it? Yeah. So like, sorry, going back to the question of like, you know, the, the saturation of PTs, you kind of get it in any place. As a customer looking into it, 
you have to, what, what have they got? What experience have they got? What have they done? Mm -hmm. You know, I will get people that want to come to me specifically because they like the fighting. But then I also have a lot more to offer. But I need to showcase that and I need to tell them that as well. And also I think people, people like to know knowledge. I used to say with hairdressing, a bad haircut is always a bad consultation. Yeah. As long as I know what your short and your long is, yeah. okay, now we can have a gauge, right? And it's the same with training. Okay, so you want to lose weight. Oh, you're going on holiday in six weeks. What about afterwards? I don't really care. I just want to lose weight for six weeks. Right, cool. That's fine. Now I know where we're going. Mm. And it, as long as you stick to it, it will happen. But then I also like to tell people about it. A lot of people won't tell you why they're doing things. Why are you running in the green zone? Yeah, 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 why yeah. are you doing this many reps and sets? People want to know why they're doing it. And they also want to know the person telling them understands it and knows it. It's educating them yeah. so they obviously understand what they're doing and why they're doing it Precisely. most importantly, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? I think there's a lot of people just want that magical pill. You know, they want the, the quick answer. You know, they want the quick results. But like you said, so it's much. like understanding, okay, look, this is what's going to happen, but in order to sustain it and manage it, you yeah. know, this is what you need to do. Yeah, for sure. So what other stuff do you tend to do? You know, like, obviously now with COVID happening, things yeah. have changed. Dramatically. <laughs> yeah, for everyone. And it's like in the fitness industry, especially, you know, with gyms being closed and, you know, fitness classes not happening. Yeah. I know, like, obviously personal training can happen outside on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but, yeah. you know, there's, with the weather that we've got here now at the moment, it's freezing cold, no one really wants to train. Oh. So, like, how is things kind of like, how, how are you trying to adjust to this whole situation that we're doing? Yeah. And also, what's your sort of like, own personal goals that you're working towards doing at the moment? So the way I'm getting around COVID, <coughs> so me and my friend Waz, my business partner, we have a company called Raise London. Mm -hmm. So we started it in the first lockdown and we were giving people free live Instagram workouts. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday at six o'clock. We've kept that going on. After lockdown, what we actually do is take over unique hotspots around London and put on a fitness experience like no other. But whilst we can't do that right now, we're having to stick to Instagram. Mm -hmm. So right now we do Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. live on Instagram, raise LDN. Mm -hmm. That's been great and we do a donation. So we don't actually charge people, we actually just ask for a donation. People have been amazing with it and our donations have been incredible. Uh, you know, can't thank the people enough. But we're giving them some sauce, we're giving them some spice, we're giving them a good workout, yeah. you know, it, it's good fun. That's great. Personally, I've got a few PTs uh, that I do outside. So it's annoying that I can't use my hairdressing skills right now. But, yeah, yeah. you know, you've got, I've, got, I've got a few PTs that don't mind training outside. Because if you want to train, you'll train, you'll make it happen. Yeah. But also for myself, I'm doing a little bit of further education. Uh, I want to look at doing like a strength and conditioning course, so kind of get a higher certification. Mm -hmm because I find that a lot of people recently, maybe it's the, the circles I'm in, but they want to be more specific. Like yourself, I know you've got specific goals. Yeah. People want to lose weight, that's fine, you can do that. But now it's like, okay, I want to run better, I want to run faster, I want to lift heavier, I want to look like this, or et cetera, et cetera. So a strength and conditioning course will do that. Now's the perfect time to look into it more and then see how and what is best to go about it. Mm. But again, I think, you know, like most people, it's a means to an end right now. I'm just trying to survive hand, hand to mouth. Yeah, ride, ride the wave. Yeah, I mean, person. listen, I mean, it's, fortunately, personally, I, I, I've saved quite a bit of money. Mm. Uh, let's just say I'm not getting that deposit or putting down for a mortgage anytime soon. Yeah, but yeah. at least I've got it for that. So now, you know, now that's what I'm surviving on. So I'm very fortunate, but okay. What can I do after this? Yeah, because you know I rely on the gyms to be open. Yeah. Well, my question on that then is like, what do you think is going to happen moving forward? I mean, I'm going to say, myself or the well, world? yeah, just just with with yourself and also with um, gyms and personal training. Do you think because you know we, we we have a look what's going on now at the at the moment? There's so much gym equipment going out there, yeah. even though it's like extortionately overpriced. Yeah, but. There's so many people that are like building their own home gyms. Do you think people, do you think the whole gyms will sort of like, not die down because, you know, I, I really miss going to the gym. Yeah. But do you think 
that whole industry, of course it's suffering, but do you think there's gonna be a different direction like the Zoom classes and stuff like that? Do you think? Yeah, you know, I mean, I know, where, I know where you're going with it. A lot of it is gonna be digital now. Mm -hmm. There's gonna, uh, let's just say there's gonna be a huge market for digital. I don't think it's gonna be the only thing. You can't be a gym experience. Yeah. You can't be going into the gym, seeing other people training and thriving off of that energy. I take a lot of group classes in all of the top gyms around London. And not, I, I saw a lot of busy classes. A lot of my classes were pretty much full yeah. most of the time. At the start of coming out of lockdown, it was a little bit quiet. Like I said, if you wanted to train, you were trained. And it, when we came out of the first lockdown, I think it was like summertime still, so a lot of people were training away. Outside, well, they, well, at least they got away, yeah, in training. Yeah. But the classes were always busy, and you can't beat that because you're getting the lights, the flashing lights, the atmosphere, mm. the la loud music. And it's also, you're not, it's not your music, it's someone else's music, and it always sounds better, and it's yeah, always yeah. a better playlist, right? So you can't beat that, and as much as it will be inside, at home, there's only so much you can do, only so much motivation you can have, only so much you can enjoy it. Yeah. I still think gyms are gonna be rocking it, yeah. if anything. Now there's just new protocols. Yeah. So then moving forward with your own personal goals, um, what's the direction, like you said, you want to do more strength and conditioning? Like I know you've been training, I think it was last year, wasn't it? You was training for half Ironman, yeah. was it? Yeah. So, you know, the training for that, I imagine is completely different to training when you're fighting. So how's, <laughs> is there any other sort of like goals and things that you're sort of like working towards to kind of like keep you yourself like mentally yeah. focused? There's the the reason I want to do something more SNC based is that specific specificity. I think that's a word. Um, I, I, I go down to a gym quite a lot called PWR Power mm -hmm. in Essex, and they've got a lot of professional fighters, and they're able to train at the moment because they're professional fighters. Mm -hmm. So being in and around that, I love the way that they train, and they're training for something. Looking good is great, but for me, it's always been a byproduct of the hard work I'm putting in. Mm. Then obviously, like you said, the half half Ironman, which is a triathlon, swim, bike, run, but it's just big distances. Then my, I, I was working with a coach, James Collins, he was incredible for it. And looking at his programming, it was just incredible and mind blowing. Okay, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that for? What's the reason behind this? I was running differently. I was lifting weights. I was doing very much strength based and I've never really lifted weights yeah. as my training was always very much old school. So I really want to learn more about that, becoming faster, becoming quicker, becoming stronger. The half Ironman, the goal for that was more so my dad does them. So my dad trains, uh, my dad's done four full Ironman and like 13 halves. Yeah. And I really want to do one with him whilst, whilst he was still doing them. He's, you know, he's still young and he's still in shape. He trains more than me pretty much. Yeah. But he's, uh, he's 56 and you know, he's going to take a toll on the body, but I'd love to do one with him before, then it's also, it's something different for me to do. Yeah. You know, swim, bike, run. They're all good, they're all great in their own their own respects. So I'd like to try and do one, especially a half, and then work my way up to a full. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so last question that I wanna ask you. Last meal. So it's Plus gonna be, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be start a main and dessert. What would it be? I've never been like a big, I've never been a big star. So right away I'm thinking like, what, what starters do I have at Rocker? Or like Hacky Sand, because they're, 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 I mean, they're just a starter. Let's just say, let's just say uh, a good chili squid. Okay. Okay, I love a chili squid from like Wagamama. Well, like calamari sort of calamari, thing. Calamari, yeah yeah, 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 like a nice calamari. That's what Charlie Cullen had actually. That's what oh, he's got good taste. <laughs> Dodgy haircut, but good taste. <laughs> <laughs> um, he hasn't, he's got a great haircut. My main course. Now this is always a tricky one because I love healthy food. Yeah. <laughs> but I also love. So I mean like if it was healthy, oh, man, it's, it's, it's gotta be something like a, a black cod with rice and asparagus. Mm. But I'm talking like rocker again. Like I love rocker as you can tell, but the food is just uh, unbelievable. If it was bad, it would probably be like a Five Guys burger. Oh yeah. Triple patty. Extra, extra cheese, extra, extra bacon. Yeah. Dessert, dessert would be probably, my mum once made me a Nutella cheesecake. Oh. 
Oreo base, Nutella cheesecake for my birthday. Nice. So probably something like that <laughs> with a bit nice. of ice cream. Nice, lovely. <laughs> That's it. Okay, guys, so Charlie, thank you once again for joining me in the chair. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.